quadratic summative and you are on the fifth and final objective, finding the solution or solutions of a nonlinear system of equations. This could mean a line and a parabola, a circle and a parabola, two parabolas, etc. When you're doing it through graphing, you're looking for the point or points of intersection, which means you are simply graphing. So, first up, let's look at y equals x plus 5. Oops, let me do that in blue. That's slope-intercept form. You put your point on the y-intercept. Your slope is 1, rise 1, run 1, rise 1, run 1. And you have your line. Now, in class, I will have a ruler so that you can draw a really nice straight line. A little harder here on the computer. Then I have a parabola. This parabola has gone up 7 and reflected over the x-axis. So I go up 7 and I put my vertex. Put my vertex. Then it's upside down, so I'm going to go right 1, down 1, right 2, down 1, 2, 3, 4. What I do on the right, I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4. On the left, whoops. Sorry about that. I didn't quite, wasn't counting well. One, two, three, four. Yep, there we go. Now I graph my parabola, which is just a curve. And notice that I have a point of intersection here and here. The solution to a system, remember, is a point of intersection. So it's both points. So in this case, it's the point. 1, 6, and over here it's negative 2, 3. All you have to do is graph them. This next one over here, this is a line, the bottom one here, I'm going to do in blue, but it's not in slope intercept. But if I subtract x from both sides, I get y equals negative x minus 2. Now it's in slope-intercept form. So I've got a point. My y-intercept is negative 2. And my slope is negative 1. So, and I'm putting lots of points just because I don't have a straight edge that I can use here. Um, which means it gets kind of curvy crazy. All right, then I've got my parabola. Now this parabola, first, it's in standard form, so I need to use the x equals negative b over 2 times a, or negative 3. This, I'll do a little dashed line here, is my axis of symmetry. Now I'm going to put negative 3 in for x, so y is equal to negative 3 quantity squared plus 6 times negative 3 oops, plus 4. Don't know why that just jumped. And when I plug all that in, I get negative 5. So my vertex is negative 3, negative 5. I put my point here. A is equal to 1. So it's not reflected and there's no stretch or compress. So I simply go right 1, up 1. Write 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4. What I do on the right, I do on the left. Remember, I can also go left, I can go right 3 and up 9, which means I can go left 3 and up 9. And I have to always take my graph until it goes past the other shape. So now I can tell that at negative 6, 4, I have a point of intersection. And at negative 1, negative 1, I have a point of intersection. Solving by graphing is not bad. You just have to be able to graph them correctly. Next up, we have two parabolas. The first parabola up here has simply gone 
down 9. So we'll come down here to 9, put our point, and right 1, up 1, right 2, up 4, right 3, up 9. What I do on the right, I do on the left. And I graph it. So the first one's pretty easy. The second one, mm, it's not terrible, but it's not in standard form, or it's not in vertex form, it's in standard form. So x is equal to negative b over 2 times a. So this winds up being positive 3. Now I'm going to put 3 in. So y is equal to 3 squared minus 6 times 3 minus 9. And when I put all that together, I get negative 18. So I come out here to 3, and I come down to negative 18, and I put my point. A is equal to 1, so it's simply right 1, up 1. Right 2, up 1, 2, oops, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I can go all the way up 9. What I do on the right, I do on the left. And notice, I have my point of intersection. And the purple is going to keep going up faster than this. So they're never going to intersect again. So they intersect in that one spot, which happens to be the point 0, negative 9. Great. Now we're up to the very last one. So for this one, they're both in standard form. Neither one of them are in vertex form. Well, this guy up here, okay, x equals negative b is going to be 6 over 2 times negative 1. That's going to give me negative 3. Then I'm going to put negative 3 in. So y is going to be equal to negative 3 quantity squared is 9. That will be negative 9. Negative 3 times negative 6 makes that plus 18. Minus 11. And this gives me negative 2. So negative 3, negative 2 is my point. A is equal to negative 1, so I go upside down. So right 1, down 1, right 2, down 1, 2, 3, 4. What I do on the right, I do on the left, and I draw my curve. Then this other one, x equals negative b over 2 times a. So that's equal to 2. Then when I put 2 in, I get 4 minus, ooh, minus 8 is equal to negative 4. So at 2, negative 4, I put my vertex. Right 1, up 1, because a is 1. Let me put over here, a is equal to 1. So right 1, up 1, right 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4. What I do on the right, I do on the left, and notice these two parabolas, they never intersect. This one, as it goes farther and farther to the left, it's never going to touch the green one. The green one's never going to touch the purple one. So in this case, there is no solution. If they don't intersect, there is no solution. There, there is no point that will satisfy both of these equations. Next up, if all you needed was the graphing, you can stop it now. If what you need solving systems algebraically, this is the next set. First thing. And so, the point or points where these two equations meet will mean that these two y values are the same. 
If those two y values are the same, then the expressions to which they equal, they're equal will be the same, which means that x squared minus 3x minus 2 will equal x plus 3 if those two y's are the same. So now I can subtract x from both sides and I get 4x. I subtract 3 from both sides and I get minus 5. Now I can factor this. x minus 5 times x plus 1 equals 0. Remember that I'm looking for factors of negative 5 that will add to negative 4. That would be negative 5 and 1. So x is equal to 5. x equals negative 1. Now here you've got to be careful. Don't just stop. Because remember that the solution to a system is a point. So I need both the x and the y. So that means I'm going to do y equals, and I'm going to use the linear equation, 5 plus 3, which is equal to 8, or y is equal to negative 1 plus 3, which is equal to 2. So my answers are 5 and 8 and negative 1 and 2. My solution. Number 6. Same, pre same premise, except that I don't have y by itself. But I can easily do that. I can add y to this side and subtract 7 so that I have 3x minus 7 is equal to y. Now, the two y's are equal, so you get 2x squared plus 20x plus 46 equals 3x minus 7. I still have 2x squared. I subtract 3x, so I'll have 17x. I'll add the 7 to both sides, and I'll have 53. Now, I take a look at this, and I go, hmm, factors of 106 and add 17, not sure. So I'm just going to do it using the quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. x will be equal to negative 12 plus or minus the square root of ooh, negative 135 over 4. Here, I have a problem. I'm going to have an imaginary solution. But when I'm solving in the system, I can't get an imaginary solution because the solution are the point or points of intersection. Since this indicates imaginary, this simply tells me that there is no solution to the system. This means that if I were to graph this line and this parabola, they would not intersect. Next up, we have, again, a line and a circle. Hmm. Well, I realize that down here, I can get that 2y is equal to x. I don't have an x or a y up here. I have x squared and y squared. So if I square both of these sides, x squared is equal to 4y squared. So I can substitute in 4y squared for x squared. So taking this top equation here, I have y squared minus, and this is going to be x squared, so I substitute that in, plus 75 is equal to 0. This becomes negative 3y squared. I've got 1y squared minus 4y squared is minus 3y squared. Plus 75 is equal to 0. Subtract 75 from both sides. Negative 3y squared is equal to negative 75. y squared is equal to 25. I divided both sides by the negative 3. 
So y is equal to plus or minus 5. Knowing that, I can put the y in to this equation. So 2 times positive 5 is positive 10. So I've got 10 and 5. And then I can turn around and say 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. That's what, again, I'm using this guy here and here. So negative, so the negative 10 is the x value and the negative 5 is the y value. How's that? Not bad, right? Remember that you've got to be careful and you've got to put it x, y, not y, x. Okay? All right, last one, and this one, we have y equals 4x squared minus 29 and y equals x squared minus 17. Same process, 4x squared minus 29 equals x squared minus 17. Subtract x squared, 3x squared, add 17 minus 12 equals 0. 3 times x squared minus 4. I took out a greatest common factor. Okay, so GCF. Now, I recognize that I have a difference of squares. So 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. x equals negative 2 or 2. I can do y now. y is equal to negative 2 quantity squared minus 17. That's equal to 4 minus 17, which is negative 13. If I also do y equals 2 squared minus 17, I'm going to get the same thing. So notice that x is plus or minus 2, and regardless, y is equal to, oops, I've got my negative there, negative 13. There you have it. You've now completed the entire review for the test. Good luck!